did that push all my genetics back to fast twitch, muscle fibering, bodybuilding, sprinting, the complete opposite pendulum of where I started. I don't know, but I am kind of freaked out as I fully come back. What is up everyone, it's Rusa. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's here some more sip of some Fiji water. There's your disgusting noise. Here's some more spritz. Intelligent neon. The summer fragrance. There's your noise. Got a bite to smell it. I almost stuttered. All right. Today, weird topic. I've been kind of like teasing it. Yeah, I'm starting to fully recover. I think you guys can see, you know, each video. I'm more like myself, right? I appreciate all the comments and love sincerely. Thank you. But the weird thing in the gym is like how I changed my epigenetics for bodybuilding by accident, figuring it out. Whoops. And or I'll go into the other theory I have, but yeah, this video is going to be very rambly and you can feel free to insert your own opinion into the comment section. This one is not like set in stone. This is definitely more in the bro science section of this channel. And I wanted to share my theories before I start vlogging again because I appreciate all the comments, but I'm much more conscious these days and I'm able to record, shoot, edit, eat, bodybuild, you know, rebuild the business, bullshit, everything, blah, blah, blah. The main priority for me, obviously has been having fun in the gym again, rebuilding my physique as fast as possible, realizing that the strength pyramids that I have to get back to are very hard and I need to samurai around the gym. I am playing a bit catch up, but thank you for 80K. I sincerely appreciate all the new subscribers stopping in. Be sure to view all the videos, browse, binge the channel. That's the best way to get all my knowledge. The fastest is just play my videos on two times speed while you're doing cardio and you're good. This one's a crazy one. So there are two opinions on this that I have on how I have changed my RNA epigenetics for bodybuilding. Now we have to go into the beginning of Ryan Russo on YouTube and pull up the cross country runner picks. So I was a 140 pound long distance runner. We've said it a thousand times on this channel, blah, blah, blah. You already get it. What am I making out of this point is that when I was younger, my RNA adapted for long distance running, which is not good for bodybuilding whatsoever. It's actually on the complete opposite side of the pendulum, focusing on slow twitch, muscle fibers, extreme BMR endurance, everything like like against gaining and holding mass, my younger self, older self, wanted a bodybuilder physique. So I switched out into bodybuilding essentially around my junior, senior year of high school. And I was always fighting those adaptations I did because again, my dad was a long distance running coach, multiple state champions in high school under his belt. And I would run with them and realize how mentally weak I was all the time in running. And my younger life was going to cross country meets before I even started running. So that was embedded into my mind and I don't really regret the mental fortitude of long distance racing, not running, racing. But as we move on, you'll notice that my bodybuilding career probably wasn't going to pan out, whatever. Again, my biohacking career is always fine with the information and that you guys have seen physique progression over time, but I'm talking about like, again, we had Colin on the channel. I'll throw Colin up. Colin is what you would say. Okay. Yeah. Go on stage. Okay. Yeah. Like there's probably some risk reward to actually abusing PEDs going down this path. The genes, the way you react, the gear is there. Everything's in your favor genetics wise. For me, that's the opposite, right? I showcase that you could still progress with mid genetics as myself. We enter the Canon event where I castrate myself. I'm done talking about it specifically, but it left me in a state with RNA damage, DNA RNA damage around theoretically the androgen receptor, but tons of RNA DNA is messed up. And it put me in a state of low five alpha reductase expression throughout my body. So this is theory number one, before I get into the other theory, which I am more interested in, but it could simply just be this. 
basically under the theory of like if you had less halopragnalone it would be easier for you to fight into the pump the pump would be less painful you would get more reps and over time you would gain more tissue this is seen in some people however i've pointed out the gabinergic system irregularities that have popped up again there's a roll of dice with that compound but basically i do believe that you could gain more muscle simply when i was in that castrated state i never stopped training i still was always on androgens i wasn't responding to them i couldn't feel anything per se because my ar were messed up but i was training like crazy i couldn't feel a pump i was training way deep into failure with super high rep sets because that was pretty much the only way my body would somewhat train was that going crazy deep into failure which popped all the muscle back out is that all i'm rambling about is that simply the answer to this or is it the other rabbit hole the other rabbit hole is that i opened up my rna i used sodium valparate extended release open up my rna like a slot machine again another roll of the dice drug here stupid dangerous right in a detrimental state don't care open up the rna and blast dihydroboron so now, did I open up my RNA and then all that dihydroboron mimicking an extremely high level of dihydrotestosterone, did that push all my genetics back to fast twitch, muscle fibering, bodybuilding, sprinting, the complete opposite pendulum of where I started? I don't know, but I am kind of freaked out as I fully come back. I am currently sitting in this chair at 272 pounds and I am not blasting gear yet. I'm still trying to figure out what the comeback cycle is going to be that I want to document when I'm fully able to train like an animal, which is coming up within these next couple of weeks. I hope, right? It's taken fucking forever. I just, I'm hopeful. I'm very blessed to be able to even be alive, right? Type shit. I think it's this because my chest feel so much different. I've never had a chest, never could build it. Incline 140 pound dumbbells, didn't matter. Do slow reps, didn't matter. I always had the bird runner's chest. That was an adaptation of when I was in cross country. I don't need to be carrying this heavy load if I actually want to be a division one runner which in ninth grade of high school with the long distance running dad coach I had, I was very much pointed at being a D1 long distance runner. Now I have this chest. I don't think my insertions have changed, but I just, my body feels fucking different after this. And I've been like checking in on Jasper and it's very like hard to see the other dude I cured if this is also some sort of thing because he's young in his physique building career. I mean, he has leg veins and you know, his veins and his arms and everything. But for me, having all these pictures of my chest, all these different pictures of me at all these different weights, all these, I'm fat as fuck. I'm medium lean. I've only been like really lean like two times in my life because I just decided to gain size my whole twenties. I can tell you that my chest feels really different. Was it because I had that low allopregnanolone level, that low 5-alpha reductase expression level, that when I was in that disease state, barely able to walk, looked like a fucking cancer patient, that I was going so deep into failure that I was gaining muscle and I was fighting a pump that wasn't there, that this all popped back out? Or did the valparate open up the extremely high level of dihydroboron I use, which basically mimics dihydrotestosterone, which I'm basically re-simulating puberty with a way crazier dihydrotestosterone, which in this case I'm injecting dihydroboron, it's a way crazier puberty than I would ever really be exposed to. And I just really notice my chest per se, and that my forearms look slightly different. And I only say this because I'm not blasting gear yet. And as my basal metabolic rate recovers, this is like, did I accidentally create my set point physique, my baseline physique around 260 and lock those genetics in? Because it's really, it really wasn't that hard for me to get to 270. And it was brutal for me to maintain 260 before this. It's very weird and I'm going to start vlogging it. At first I was just fucking with me, but as I fully come back and I know that my strength is nowhere near it was, meaning like my overall thickness, I'm going to continue to get thicker. Did I accidentally modify all my epigenetics 
for bodybuilding because I had to, or am I just pulling this out of my ass? Personally, when I looked into the data of Valparate, a reported side effect was muscle gain. Why is a seizure medication causing muscle gain? Well, we know it's not just a seizure and bipolar medication. If you followed my health fiasco journey, you'll know it's an RNA switcher and the RNA is open and it's taking algorithmic notes on what's going on in the body. AK why the syndrome triggered and why it reversed is because the RNA reprinted. The switches flipped and I don't know what all I flipped and that's what everyone's watching, right? They want to see if my persona changes. They want to see if I even fully become conscious again. And it seems to all be going in the right direction. The only thing is, is I've documented my body forever on this channel, forever on social media. And I know how my body felt before this happened to me. This chest, I did not have before. I literally made fun of my fucking chest all the time. It was the body part that I, I couldn't grow. And now I sit here with this giant, like I wouldn't call it giant, I would call like the insertion still shitty, but it feels fully filled out at 270 pounds when it wasn't like this before. And that's where I'm just like, did I accidentally figure out the way to modify everything? Now, I know this is TMI, but I'll go into a penis enlargement little tangent at the end. Yeah, my dick is fucking different. It's different. The AR architecture around my dick is permanently different you know i'll just say it like that i'm not gonna go into the same video but everything's changed it's very weird and the only thing i'm like documenting now is i'm gonna get on camera start documenting my physique as my strength comes back but like i'm thinking like october after this summer that would be probably me above a hundred like at the craziest physique knock on wood I have ever created. And I wonder, and I just wanted to document in my historical timeline on this channel, if it was either the disease state I was in that caused less 5-alpha reductase expression, therefore virtually zero allopregnanolone, which sucked in all my muscles, which I felt no pump, I felt like shit, blah, blah, blah. I still lifted every fucking day and I couldn't feel my pump. I was doing super high reps, was me going into that failure, still growing all that muscle and it just re-popped out after I fix myself or was it the Valparate? I was RNA adapted and locked as a long distance runner. That bullshit castration shit happens to me. I open up my RNA with Valpuric acid extended release while being on shit tons of dihydroboron, which mimics a dihydrotestosterone level and training in the gym and boxing on that seizure medication at extremely high levels, causing RNA changes under heat of boxing and under heat of lifting under like the intense moments, right? That's when the RNA is really firing. It's really picking up on the stress in the fight or flight environment. I was causing those adaptations every day. Did that completely transform my body? Did that alter my end term personality that you will probably see at the end of this summer? We will wait and find out, but I definitely wanted to read the comments of this video. I will see you guys in my next one.